Adam Boyer was last seen a week ago. When the police arrived, they found his apartment was left in a state of disarray. There were papers left out that had their writing scribbled over and scratched out. There were books on the floor that looked like they fell off the shelf. But the strangest thing about Adam's disappearance was his doors and windows. The windows and doors were all locked and barricaded from the inside. Being at home is one of the safest. What the? Hmm? Hmm. Being at home is one of the safest. Oh, seriously. Don't come in! I'M NAKED! <clears throat> Being at home is one of the safest... SON OF A- It started when I was six years old. I was in school. It was the middle of a reading lesson and I needed to pee. Badly. At that age, a few classmates still wet themselves and I always got paranoid about embarrassing myself in public like that. I stuck my hand up and told Miss Zebby that I needed to use the bathroom. She gave me the key to the handicapped access bathroom. It was the closest to my classroom. It was the middle of fifth period, and the corridors were empty. I was short, scrawny back then. I sometimes had trouble with doors, especially unlocking them. I fumbled for a good minute or two trying to open the blasted thing, Anyway, as I sat on my porcelain throne, there came a knocking at the door. Someone's in here, I called, disgruntled at this disturbance. There came a pause, then the knocking resumed. It was faster now, more determined. Wait a minute! The knocking slowed, and a voice replied, let me in. I need to come inside. The speaker's tone was thin and reedy. An adult I didn't recognize. I may have been six, but I also had a fairly good understanding of bathroom etiquette. Mainly that you didn't let more than one person into an area only slightly larger than a cupboard. Go away! The knocking intensified again, until it was a frantic drumbeat, just a few feet from me and out of sight. I heard the voice shouting something, growing more and more desperate. Let me in! Just open the door, please! I was terrified by that point. The hammering and yelling was so loud, and yet nobody came to investigate it. Eventually, my teacher came to find me, angry because I had been gone for so long. When I refused to open the door to let her in, she got the spare key from the main office, and then took me to the principal to have my parents called. I was suspended for the rest of the week. I never told anyone what happened. I was just glad it was over. At least, I thought it was over. My next encounter with this phenomenon happened a month later. We were having a family barbecue for my seventh birthday. It was a beautiful sunny day. My dad had everything ready to go, but the coal refused to light. He asked me to go and get some fire starters from the shed at the side of the house. It was pretty cramped inside. I wouldn't fit all the way in, so I just opened the door, stood on tiptoes, and reached the shelf holding the fire starters. Then I shut the door behind me. As I turned away, a frantic knocking hit the other side of the door. Open up! I need to come through! This voice was not the one that I'd heard the month before. It was deeper, more brooding and angry. I said nothing and hurried away. I had no idea what was happening, but it frightened me. As I walked away, there came a final thump, like a fist being slammed against the wood. You little bastard! I'll rip out your goddamn teeth! Open this door! I ran back to my party and spent the rest of the day glancing over my shoulder. As you might have guessed by now, there were a lot of these voices. I counted at least 30. Every month or so, I used to get them, pleading to be let through the doors. Almost always, it would be immediately after I shut a door behind me as though these strange entities had been following me. I never told anyone, but to be honest, I kind of just got used to it. It always made me jump, and some of the voices would make me feel uneasy. But I knew that I was safe, so long as I did not open the door. 
I even got used to some of the voices, to the extent that I even named them. There was one which always used to appear at my front door at home. We have a frosted glass, and I could see a silhouette of an average-sized man wearing a cap of some kind. He never spoke, but occasionally would push envelopes containing blank pieces of paper under the door. I called him the postman. He was one of the more unsettling ones. If I tried to speak to him, he would look up sharply, then begin knocking. I generally left the postman alone. Twenty years later, and I have retained as much normality as possible. I have plenty of friends, and even have an on-again, off-again girlfriend. Not bad for a guy who wakes up in the middle of the night hearing voices on the other side of doors. Yeah, my buddies think I'm strange and kooky, but they put up with it. They're all great. I will miss them. You see, things have started to get strange. Well, stranger than usual, I suppose. Stranger than I'm used to. Three weeks ago, I woke up sweating and crying, though I don't know why. My dream had been, from what I can remember, fairly normal. When a huge shadow had abruptly fallen over everything. Literally, the second I opened my eyes, there came a knocking at my bedroom door. Not just a normal knocking, though. This was truly frantic. Who goes there? I yelled. P please help us, it replied. I was surprised. It was the sadistic, angry voice that I remember from my father's shed on my seventh birthday. But it seemed genuine. Sincere. There was a pained tone to it, as though the speaker were wounded. I actually found myself pulling back the sheets to get up, but I hesitated. I had never before been tempted to open the door. I suppose, as a child, I had so rigorously drummed into my head the idea of whatever lay beyond was evil, that it was just common sense. To be quite honest, I came very close to letting that thing into my room that night. Things got worse. Just two days later, I was in my local corner shop. i just paid for a bottle of milk and a newspaper when a great force slammed against the shop door. Simultaneously, a voice began screaming, a long, keening squeal of pain. I whipped around to face the door, but there were so many flyers plastered over the glass that I could only just make out the shape of a woman on the other side, slapping her palms against the window. The shopkeeper stared at me like I was crazy. In the end, I asked if he had a bathroom I could use, murmured some half thought excuse, and hid there for ten minutes until the screaming stopped. There were four more incidents between then and now, a mixture of screams and tearful begging. The postman stopped by yesterday too. He knocked politely before sliding his usual papers under the door. A total of ten plain brown envelopes. The postman waited for a few minutes, knocking occasionally, and then left me alone. Each letter contained a sheet of paper, but somebody had taken a black pen to the pages, scribbling and shading them with such vigor that there were large tears around the center, and the edges were frayed. I shoved them back into their envelopes, and tried to put it from my mind. Later on, my front door started shaking violently. It wasn't a scream, or a howl, or a roar that I heard. It was just crying. Dozens and dozens of voices, quietly crying. Another blow struck my door. Plaster flaked from the walls, and books fell from the shelf. Still no pleas of bargaining, just crying. I jumped from my chair. I could hear the wood of the door starting to give under the pressure. My phone began to ring and I could hear the sharp tapping of the glass of my window behind the curtains. I tried answering the phone, but it was more voices crying. But not just crying, more like bawling in terror. I hung up, but it kept ringing, so I took the battery out. I shoved most of my furniture against the door and window. It has been three hours since this latest attempt at entry began. The battering and crying haven't let up. I'm fairly sure that my door won't hold much longer. As for my mediocre barricade, it would be easily pushed aside by anything that could take down a door. What do they want? 
Do they even want to hurt me? They seemed fearless, even malicious before. What could have driven them to this? Maybe I should open the door. Maybe I should let them in. Silence fell. I realized that even the crying stopped. For a whole minute I sat there. Then I got up and hurried to my door, eager to escape this claustrophobic nightmare. Perhaps I'd go outside, where I could be far away from any doors and that damned knocking. I pulled away my barricade and turned the handle. Locked? I peered through the peephole. It was black, like it was being covered. I got on my knees to see if I could see anything from the keyhole. Beyond my front door was not the corridor that I remembered, but another room. Some kind of library, or classroom, I think. It seemed unoccupied, but for one kid, sitting and reading with his back to me. I banged the door. Hey! Hey, kid! Let me out, will ya? He glanced over his shoulder. Yeah, over here! Hey! Could you open the door, please? I can't. I'm in detention. I'm not supposed to talk to anyone. Go away. He turned from me. Confused and exasperated, I began to stand up. A loud bang shattered the silence once more. I realized it sounded like a fist being pounded against glass. My window. I heard it again. But this was not the frantic knocking of somebody wanting to get inside. This wasn't even an attempt to break in. Whatever was beyond that curtain and glass knew I was inside. It knew I was frightened. In the most predatory and sadistic way possible, it wanted me to be afraid. I turned back to the door and began hammering on it frantically. Hey, let me in, okay? I really need you to open this door! Hey! Hey, kid! Come on, kid! Oh boy, Adam is having a bad day. He ended up running to the kitchen drawer to grab a knife, and the knob just came right off. He then went to change his shirt, and a button came off. After that, he pulled on the door so hard that the handle just came off. Now he's really scared. Because <laughs> he has to urinate! <laughs> Thanks to YouTube, that joke was brought to you in 1080p! <laughs> if you never want to hear another pee joke again, make sure to tell me in the comments below. And if you do want to hear another pee joke, well, I guess you're in luck! Ah! <laughs>